All right, this is an audio recording. For those of you who missed the Bite Diet uh, information um, meeting lunch today, so I want to go over what the Bite Diet is and the goals of what we're doing, and hopefully you'll want to join. Feel free to send me a question if you got one. So the Bite Diet Challenge is going to be from November 20th to December 30th, so it's six weeks, and uh, make sure you do your mental health today. Um, all right, it's six weeks of challenge. Starts November 20th, ends December 31st. The cost is $120. Don't freak out yet. Let me explain what all that entails. First of all, the goals of the challenge. One, we want you to lose weight. Uh, so hopefully this is, meets your interest of losing weight. Uh, we want to coach each other through healthy food choices. So there's a little bit of a community aspect involved. I think it will create a good team bond. Then uh, we want to make sure everybody stays accountable through the holidays. Sometimes it's really hard to keep on task and keep... Uh, on your goals through the holidays because there's so much good food around. This will hopefully help with that. Um, provide a way. We want to provide a way for people to stay mentally healthy. Just giving them something positive in life, um, helping them striving for a goal. It's a good thing. So uh, I think a lot of people need that at this time. And my goal personally is that through this, I have at least three people to to finish the finish the the race, finish the challenge. I believe uh, we can make some raving fans, and that'll help us. Uh, do some uh, nutrition challenges for the future. All right, so I want to tell you my story with the Bite Diet. My story goes back to 2016. Uh, September 2016, I started with this question. I asked Google a question. I just couldn't get a straight answer. My question was, what's the average amount of calories on a fork or a spoon? I couldn't get an answer. So then I had a, sort of a light bulb moment, and instead I thought, instead of counting calories, why not count bites? So... I began the process of counting my bites, and uh, through that, and then I joined South Island CrossFit in November 9th, 2016. Uh, nine months later, June 2017, I had lost 55 pounds, uh, gone from um, 247 down to, I believe it was 195 or 192. Uh, I lost a lot of weight. It was really encouraging. So uh, here's what I found. You can't do CrossFit very well unless you are also focused on your nutrition. Nutrition makes CrossFit work. So if you're just doing CrossFit and eating a bunch, you're probably just not doing as much for your goals as you could. So I would encourage you, nutrition is the foundation for your fitness. So my story didn't end there. I stopped doing the bite diet. I stopped and I had a hard time getting back on. Well, I bought the gym in 2018 and tried a bunch of different diets and I kind of found them all a little too complicated. So uh, through that time, the last couple of years, my weight's been back up and down between 10 to 15 pounds or so. Um, but this last month, I restarted. And I started, one, one of the reasons I started, my grandpa was dying. I started considering his life and kind of what my life would look like uh, for the next several years of my life. But hoping, you know, how did I want my life to end and how did I want, how long did I want to be functional? And I thought, well, I better get my, my nutrition under control. Uh, so I started this four weeks ago on October 22nd. I restarted and recommitted myself to it. And uh, I'd have, I'm would i happy to say that right now I'm down about eight or nine pounds since then and just a little bit under four weeks. So I believe in this bite diet. And so now my next question is this. Can my success translate to others? In other words, can I start learning to coach other people to follow this nutrition plan? Now, I got to be clear. I'm not a nutritionist. I am not a dietitian. And... And this is definitely not professional nutrition help. What I'm simply passing on to you is something that I think I kind of fell into. And I think, uh, I don't want to say I invented it, but I kind of did. I kind of came up with this plan, and I think it works, and it makes it really simple. And a lot of diets can fit into this. So I'm hoping it's simple enough for anyone. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, I'm, my other question is, does the challenge uh, – fitting into the community, create a good, positive team culture. I just think it'd be really cool to have uh, sort of kernels of uh, groups of people who've gone through this, and they're just really close and tight because um, doing a nutrition challenge together uh, really does bond you. And so I say that because there's a few things that are essential for this to be successful. For one, uh, it's going to push a lot of your comfort zones. If you're going to join you got to accept that we're going to push your comfort zone. And by that, I mean we're going to take a picture before and after. And I know some people won't join a nutrition challenge because of the pictures. 
But all I can say is it's going to be worth it. We're not going to share it and blast it out there. Um, well, we might at the end because I think you'll see some results. But at the same time, uh, other people in the com in the bite diet challenge they might see your picture, and uh, that's okay. Uh, we're not here to tear anybody down. We're here to help build each other up. So it's going to push some comfort zones. Then um, make sure what else is going to push you is that someone else is going to look at your food journal and other people in the bite diet challenge community are going to look at it. And so people will judge your food. Some people feel very uncomfortable with that. And so uh, be ready for that. Uh, it's going to change your habits. And so sometimes just changing your habits, well, we, we get comfortable with our habits. And so pushing, being pushed out of that was going to push you out of your comfort zone. Um, sharing your weight, you're going to record your weight and other people are going to see what that is in our, in our bite diet challenge com community. And so that's going to push you out of your comfort zone too. Um, the other thing that's people just aren't really comfortable with, and I tell them about the bite diet, I think a lot of people just don't like to think while they eat. And so, um, for some of you, it's going to push you because you're going to be counting your bites in your mind and and just kind of forces you to be conscious while eating, not just conscious of choosing what you eat before you eat, but conscious while you eat. And I think that will push some people out of their comfort zone. Now, um, the other thing that's going to be essential for a success of this is honesty. And so you got to come to it and be ready to be honest, honest with each other and honest with your coach, me, and uh, I'll be honest with you. You know, so it's I really think it's important for us to speak truth into each other's lives as we go through this. So. It takes an honest look at your food. It takes honesty when you're counting and recording your food and uh, and your weight. Honestly, if you try to cheat and take bigger bites or you uh, don't count certain bites and then you record it, um, you're eventually going to weigh yourself, and it's not your weight is going to tell the truth. And then um, you're you'll have to cut your bites down the next week, and um, you really won't be that far ahead anyway. So you better just be honest. Um, so we hope a, a good honest community is something people really miss and it's helpful for people particularly with a lot of mental health stuff today having people around you that are honest and truthful is really nice um the last thing is just um that also means just like having a community of people that understand that that if people speak truth into your life you just can't get too offended by it you kind of got to take it and and uh, let them shape your life, let their, their, their truth speaking into you shape your life so that you take that and run with it. So being moldable and being willing to be changed, is it takes some honesty with that. So, uh, so that means um, we also need 100% commitment, 100% commitment that you would improve yourself, um, that you would uh, spur each other forward. I crossed out helping because I think spurring is a little bit more accurate. It's like kind of like you kick the horse to get the horse to move. Helping is more like you just, um, you know, reaching out your hand and pulling someone up. But to spur someone on is just like you kind of got to prick them a little bit. And we got to be committed to that to help each other get through a, a diet challenge. Nobody, we often don't love diets. We like to eat what we want. And so spurring each other on and challenging each other, we got to be committed to that. Um, third thing we got to be committed to is cultivating. I said a positive initially. I crossed it out later and I just said a genuine community, a community of people that. Uh, we are genuinely committed to each other and helping each other and pushing each other forward. So um, next question I get a lot is how do you do the bite diet? So here's what week number one looks like. On your first day, you're going to stand on the scale and you're going to weigh yourself. And you're going to weigh yourself each week on that same day. So uh, then you'll also take your initial picture. You'll stand in front of the mirror, take a front picture, a side picture. We don't really want to see anything too far up just to, you know, if you want to show your belly, that's fine. If you need a, a shirt over it, that's fine too. But I think you'll see results. Um, so take a picture on the front and the side. The, that picture is really for you, but if you want to send it in, we, well, you are going to send it in, I should say, and we'll keep it. We're not going to blast it out, but we'll keep it, and then we have something to compare it to at the end. Now, the first week is the key thing is just to eat normal. Eat like you've, all, like you've been eating for the last month or two. Uh, don't try to change anything. You're going to eat normal because this for, the key to this first week is just sort of getting the baseline so that we can um, then adjust the bites accordingly. So you, you really it's really getting used to the habit this week of getting used to counting your bites and, and recording them and then keeping your food journal. And so uh, there'll be a weekly team virtual lunch. So I was thinking like a Wednesday lunch or whenever we can all agree that 
Uh, we can have lunch together. So it'll be a 30 minute lunch where we sit down, talk about some nutrition stuff and help each other move forward. And then at the end of the first week, uh, I'll, I'll sit down with you for 15 minutes and do a consultation. I'll look at your, your bite diet journal and we can go over some things and give you some pointers and tips and uh, help you sort of target where you're going for the next week. So here's a look at what I do for my bite diet. Uh, I keep a spreadsheet and I use numbers and um, you can use Excel, you can use um, something on uh, Google Drive uh, and I'm happy to share this with anybody, uh, but I use my number spreadsheet because it works on my iPhone fairly easy. And there's six columns. I keep my date, uh, I'll record a weight once a week and then I have a meal, I just put a, a letter there to, to point out what's a meal, what's a snack. Um, and then uh, I record the number of bites, the total number of bites. In my description, I'll write out kind of where those bites went. So you can see that first day I, I was weighing 221. Um, I had tofu scram for breakfast, uh, French toast, vanilla protein in my water, and um, fish oil pills. And, and then the last column is pretty key too. It helps me just psychologically kind of gauge how I feel. So on a scale of one to five, I record um, how full I feel. So um, one would be I'm still starving. Two is I'm still not satisfied, but I've got a little bit of hunger. Uh, three is I'm satisfied and I, I feel good. This will work. Four is I, I'm i full, a little extra full, uh, but maybe not too bad. And five would be just like I picked out or um, I was gluttonous and, and I'm going to be stuffed for a while. So I record that and that just helps me psychologically get to the next um, meal as well as just sort of helps me understand what I'm looking at, the size and quantity of the food on my plate or my bowl, and helps me um, then count for future. So when I first started, how I counted, I, I downloaded an app, a tally counter app, and I'm sure there's plenty of these out there. Um, and I just counted on the tally app. And But you know, uh, there's things you can do to like make counting easy. Like if you eat a sandwich, you um, cut it in half and you eat, count the bites for half of it, and then you double it for the next one. Or you know, sometimes after a while, you you maybe you eat the same thing for breakfast every day. I know I kind of have like a, a protein shake every day, and it's like the same size. So I know I counted it on day one, min two, and after that it was like the bites are the same. And so I just keep moving forward and put the same total in each day. And so um, there's things you can do where you don't, you're not really always counting, you're just keeping track of your count. And then if you forget, like halfway through a meal, you forget to to count your bites, then eat the rest of the half of the meal and then double it, you know? And so there's ways to easily count your bites. Now, if, you know, a lot of people will ask me, well, what about drinking? Well, when I count, when I drink water, I don't count my bites, uh, but anything else I drink that's not water, I count all, basically all the um, times I bring the cup up to my mouth and then pull it away. And so I count those times. I try not to like do something extra huge and just try to be normal about it. So, um, main thing is just keep track of what you're doing. The first week is just to get a baseline. Then the next two weeks, what we're going to two weeks, weeks two and three, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the bite total probably around 10 to 20%. But really our goal is to kind of make sure you get um, maybe one to three pounds a week. And the results vary because obviously everybody's body type is differently. Sometimes um, losing a pound for someone can take a month. And that's just because maybe they don't have as much to lose or or whatnot, but initially in these first couple weeks is when we see probably the biggest results of our weight loss, just because we're getting used to something new and your body's uh, kind of waking up and responding to this. So uh, you'll see some good results in the first couple weeks. Um, you got to get used to budgeting. So this is where the next two weeks, you the first week you got used to recording your your bites. Now you're going to get used to budgeting your bites through the day. Like you know, so um, you'll know how many bites you typically have for breakfast, and you know then do you, when do you have your big meal? Uh, do you have a big meal after you work out? Um, or do you have one so many hours before you work out? And so part of that we'll talk about in the consultation and just help you coach and sort of like where should you have those things and, and maybe how to get your proteins in certain times of the day and so forth. So um, then each week, again, we'll have the virtual lunch. And the second consultation will sort of be around the mid midpoint of the challenge, so probably week three. And then um, weeks four to six, what we'll do, um, at this point, you're, you're starting to settle in on, like, where your consistent bite total is going to be. So, you know, we might, we might adjust that once or twice through the bite diet, but 
by the end, I hope you have sort of a consistent like byte total you're kind of aiming for that will give you like a slow and steady pace so that you eventually meet your your um, weight loss goal. So um, yeah, slow and steady is really the key. Don't try to rush it. If you lose too much too fast, I don't think it's that healthy. And we're not trying to create a starvation diet. We're not trying to starve you from meal to meal. That's why we do that rating system on the journal. Um, we're wanting you to sort of slow and steady, give yourself enough food and nutrition to fuel your activities for that day or that afternoon, and, and then eat again to refuel. But don't overeat and overextend yourself, and then you go back to eating for dinner and you, you haven't used all the fuel yet. So that's what we're trying to work on. Then um, we, want, we want to make sure this time, at this point in time, we're really aiming for healthier nutrition. So you saw on my first, uh, that first day of my bite diet, I actually had a donut that day. You know, so like, as we coach you along, we'll start looking at those things in the journal and say, okay, how can we start removing some of these sugars and replace them with healthier options? Like maybe you could have a, an apple instead, you know, and um, how can we add some proteins to your diet? Or, you know, are you feeling lightheaded at times? Or are you feeling sluggish? You know, there's things we can encourage you to eat to help you through some of those times for those meals and those snacks. So again, we'll have weekly virtual lunches. And then at the end, you'll take a final picture and weigh yourself. And, um, and then you'll have the third consultation at the end or shortly after. And we'll just sort of talk about how you move forward after the bite diet challenge. And I'm hoping that after the end, uh, after six weeks, you'll have the tools you need to kind of keep moving forward with a diet. And by that time, you'll have sort of like the habit with it and everything will kind of make sense. So now here's why the bite diet works. Um, it eliminates really your overeating. I know like so many times before I'm on the bite diet, like so many meals a week, I would just overeat. And I just think, oh, it's just one or two meals. But over time, those overeating meals keep increasing. But this kind of eliminates those overeating meals. And um, so you don't have those overeating meals, but then you also have days where you just don't eat as much and your body just kind of keeps chipping away at, at the fat in your body. So um, it gives you a reason, like when you get to a point in a meal, just to say no. So at first, you might overload your plate because, like, you're just not used to uh, what you got. So, like, I know what I do is I, I would overload my plate. I didn't realize uh, before, like, how many bites I was eating at lunch. I was eating sometimes, like, 40 to 60 bites at lunch, uh, you know. And now once I got on the bite diet this last month, you know, I was like, oh, maybe I can scale that back to, like, 30 or, to, like, um, 30 to 40. And that actually made a big difference for me. So, um the, you know, the other thing at the white work is you can't really cheat. You know, if you try to cheat, you, the scale is going to tail, tail the tail. And then, um, you, you know, if you lose, if you gain weight one week because you're taking humongous bites, um, you'll get on the scale and your weight might go up or it may not go down. And then we'll say, okay, we, we got to adjust, um, the bites a little bit. And then the next week, of course, you'll be, um, you know, cutting back. And if you go back to eating normal, then you're going to feel it even worse. So you really can't cheat. And it's really not worth it. So you're only cheating yourself. Um, the next thing is why it works is you can incorporate most of like eating lifestyles into it. So like if you're on a paleo or keto, keto or a zone diet, or um, like I've even been experimenting with the intermittent fasting, like um, you can incorporate those things into this diet and it works. So um, I think the healthy eating still works. You just kind of got in, get into it. I think this diet really works. The bite diet really works just to help people get in the habit of being in a diet. And so um, that's a that's kind of a big thing. A lot of people aren't used to journaling their food. And I think once you start journaling your food, particularly, you know, at the beginning of a diet, like this first six weeks, it really helps open your eyes to see how you can uh, adjust your nutrition through, um, through your life. So now the biggest reason I think why it'll work, um, and I hope is that it's simple. It's really simple for me. I don't have to put food on a scale. I don't have to count calories and keep track of those. I'm simply just counting my bites. I'm counting up from one and, you know, on the way up. So it's just, it's not that hard to count. I know some people think it is, but after a while you get used to it, you learn tricks just to keep track of things. Sometimes you just get good at guessing and so forth. And so um, it, it makes it really simple. So now here's what, here's the value in this, what you're going to get for joining this, um, this challenge. Um, with $120, you're going to get um, a protein. So in that first consultation with you, I'll kind of figure out what would be a good time for you to add some protein to your diet. And so we'll even figure out which protein works best. So if 
it's just the standard whey protein or is it um, there's a time in your day you really need a meal replacement or uh, it, maybe you don't like maybe dairy is not an issue is an issue so maybe we need to find a, a non-dairy protein that would help you out um, we'll give you a shaker from driven nutrition as well that's an eight dollar value um, we'll get you a t-shirt from South Island Cross. We'll order one for you. That's $25. And here's, I, I'm going to put a price to this, but this one's really uh, priceless because it's a consultation with me. Um, I just put 30 bucks on that. I'm not sure where, where that's at, but hey, I think there's value in meeting with me for 15 minutes, three, three times throughout this time, just to go over that. So, um, and my spreadsheet tracker, I would just put $2 on that. But again, uh, we, we hope that, um, you know, you can use whatever journal you want. The tracker works really easy for me because it's right on my phone. And my phone's just about always on me every meal. So uh, the other thing I'm going to give you for for joining is is five guest passes to South Island CrossFit. So that's that's a um, hundred dollars va of value. So you can give those guest passes to friends and family as they come in, um, maybe in the holidays or um, as you move forward um, through the year. You just have friends that come to town, or you have someone you want to invite to the gym. You can use those guest passes to to get them in. So there's a total value of $200, but we are only charging you 120. What a steal. So make sure you sign up. I hope you see the value in that. And if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. So that's what our guest pass looks like. And um, again, six weeks, November 20th to December 31st, it costs $120. Hey, email info at South Island CrossFit if you've got some questions or text me. Love to hear, hear your responses and um, have a great day. Bye.